Yeah, welcome back everybody to um, the Revit 2016 Project B series. Um, Alrighty ho, so in the previous video, if I zoom out just a little bit there, okay, we added, um, brought in some more components from the library and we um, inserted a toilet there and I think we did some stuff in the first floor plan as well. So, what I want to do with this video is, is continue with that theme and just sort of, you know, add a few more pieces in that we've already loaded. Okay, just to sort of show you how each of those, you know, some of these components a, um, can behave. So, where we'll go first is the kitchen, okay, because we imported um, a couple of benches there. So, I want to sort of add those in there now and see what happens. Okay, so we can now go CM for component. Okay, so the last component we dropped in there was a tub, okay, which is a bathtub. So, we need to just click on that down. Okay, and have, have a scroll through here and um, see if we can find these uh, cabinets or these tops or counters. There they are. So we have, um, there we go, countertop island and a countertop L shape. So we'll put the L shape in first. Okay, so just go left click on that. Okay, and as you can see, um, we've now got a component chasing the. Um, chasing the cursor. Um, if I want to rotate that instantly, again I can use my spacebar, one, two, three, four. So just, you know, spacebar will will move things um, incrementally, sort of help us do things. So, but what I want to do is basically I'm going to bring this one into this corner here. So, there you go. If you see the light, the, the blue lines appearing on the wall edges, that's just Revit telling us that it's found a snap. Okay, so I can now go left click and drop that component down. Okay, everything's still see-through, so this, you know, it's a bit oddball. I don't know why Revit does this, but this is the way it is. Okay, um, so now with these, now that I've placed this, I can now go in and, and change a couple of things. So if I left click on it, okay, I get a little push push pull arrows here and some push pull arrows here. Okay, so what I can do is I can basically just click on these and drag them around. Okay, so if we zoom in there a little bit, yeah, we're not we're not one hundred percent accurate yet. Okay, um, here's a, I can't remember if I've told you this little trick. If I type in, see at the moment if I zoom all the way in, we get really really thick lines and we can't really see you know a lot awful lot of detail. If I take my cursor up here into our quick tools, we've got this little icon here called thin lines. Okay, TL is the shortcut. And what that does, if I type in TL, it brings all our lines into um, thin lines. So what that does is just basically, the, it'll still print the line weights that we see, um, but while we're working on it, it's just nice to have some thin lines there. So, now that's not 100% accurate, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Okay, and, but what I will do is, I'm just going to finish this one, I'm just going to drag this one out to there. Now that's a little bit strange. I've just seen this. If I drag this one out and about, it seemed to snap very nicely to the edge of the cabinetry there. When I go down here, strangely enough it doesn't really seem to want to snap to anything. So, um, well this is Revit out of the box, so who knows. Okay, so Okay, so that's one, that's one bit of cabinetry there. Okay, what I might do though is I'm just going to drag this one out just a little bit further. Okay, so that we have some sort of overhang. We might, we, you know, theoretically we could put a breakfast bar there or something. Okay, so now we're just going to add another component, which is going to be the the island bench here. Okay, so back to our um, prop uh, family types. Okay, so there's our counter island there. And again, I can snap this around and try and get this to behave a little bit. Okay, so again, simple matter of, again, we're, we're being pretty basic with it. Okay, that one's snapping, that one's nice. Okay, so that one's going well. And I need, just need to drag this one down here. I'll just drag it a little bit past that kitchen bench there. And... I just want to line this one up with this line here. So, 
again, just dragging. Fingers crossed that snaps. No. See, got that little thing happening in there. I'm not going to stress about it right now. Okay, because if I go thin lines again, yeah. Okay, if you're a discerning architect or a designer, you will see that. Um, when you're printing it out at scale 1 to 100, um, we're probably not going to see that. Now, don't stress about the fact that we can still see all this joinery underneath. Okay. Actually, what have we got here? Offset 900. Ah, there we go. Right now, so if I left click on this, and have a look at our properties. Ground floor, host level floor, offset zero. Typical bench would be, say, 900 and apply. What happens now? Bingo. How about that? Okay, so what was happening... Okay, we need to repeat that for this one here. Okay, so what was happening there is that these bench tops were being placed on the ground floor. And until I changed the offset so that the benches were sitting at a place that was, you know, where we would expect it to be, um, we weren't going to see it. Okay, so now all we see are these little bits in here. And again, I'm not going to stress too much about how we would see that normally. Okay, we'll worry about all those little bits later on. Okay, so that's our kitchen. There's our two benches there. Um, now, normally we would show this as, you know, we wouldn't show this join in here. Okay. However, in reality, kitchen manufacturer is probably going to make this bench here. Then they're going to make this one here and this one here, all the separate pieces. So theoretically, you would actually see some join lines in here. Okay. Again, depends on cost and things like that. Okay. But let's just leave it as it is. Okay, let's proceed and add some more components. So, counter item we no longer need. Um, what else can we add in the kitchen there? Oh, we can add um, a range. Okay, so we can add an oven. This is a very, very simple one. Okay, it's a very basic um, oven. Again, we can just basically tack it in there, let it snap. Okay. Go back to our component. Okay, now somewhere along here we did have a, an exhaust hood. There we go. So if I left click on that, there we go. Now the exhaust hoods only will only work if they find a water host too. So I'm just going to left click on there. Bang. So not perfect. Again, you know this range hood doesn't match this size, um, but I'm going to teach you about manipulating families later on. Okay, let's go back in, back into our components, a little bit further down, uh, and I do believe we saw a refrigerator there, there we go, let's click on that, we'll just put the fridge there for now. Okay, so not perfect placement, but you know, this is, you know, you guys can do the design later on. Okay, we normally would not put a an oven so close to the fridge there there's no room to spin pots around and heat and all sorts of wonderful horrible things there okay what else can we do in here okay so that's the kitchen effectively decked out all done okay let's go back down to things oh kitchen there we go let's grab that one there so this house there offset zero again so just going to place the right direction, because I'm sort of going to place it there between these two cabinets here, but I'm just going to do this, I'm just going to place it half and half, I'm just going to see what happens, there we go, again, if I look at this, look at its properties on the left hand side, okay, it's offset there is zero, which means this is on the ground floor underneath the kitchen bench, okay, but if I go 900 there and offset it, there we go, now I can drag it in and muck around with it a little bit. So I might just place it there for now. Okay. Now the kitchen's looking a little bit better. So we have a fridge, a sink, an oven, cooktop, range hood, and we have workspace. So as, as a general rule, that's a fairly complete kitchen. Okay. Let's try and finish this laundry here. So let's just go in there. Let's find a washing machine. There we go. We've got a washer there. 
again using my space bar to flip things around okay so for argument's sake I might just put the washer there don't worry about these leaders being on the side okay that's just something to worry about later on okay back into components is there anything else in here that we can add not at this stage okay so let's go to our let's go down to our project browser let's go to the first floor plan okay and let's just finish well what we need to do is here we'll, we'll we'll add a vanity into here and I'll show you a little little wee trick that I use okay to um, cut some corners so just go CM component back into our family list okay there it is sync vanity round okay now this is just the sync by itself okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it roughly there okay now you'll notice that there is no shower in this one we could we could be crazy and assume that this is a shower over bath or something to that effect okay right so to finish off this little one here okay so we have a vanity here that's floating in the middle here, and we've got this bath with you know no real hob around it or anything like that okay now if you were doing a basic set of architectural plans where there were no internal elevations or anything like that okay and the clients you know not stressed about any of that sort of stuff okay um, and the only view time you're going to see this plan is in plan view okay what we can use we can use a bit of light you know 2d line trickery to basically finish off this particular drawing so the short key is is that there's there's, there's a few different lines in, in, in Revit and there's one called a detail line okay and the, the short key command for that is DL um, I believe if we go into the annotate tab okay in our detail section there it is detail line and DL is the short key okay so if I click on detail line okay we get a range of shapes that we can draw with it so that's just the line tool we have the line styles okay so different pen weights there some different types of um, dash lines dash lines there so these are all out of the box again okay so I might choose a 0.1 pen I don't want these lines to be particularly um, uh, prominent and um, so now what I can do is just left click and I can just just draw some lines so I might just draw a line from there to there there to there again just using my snaps and Okay, look, I'm not being 100% accurate here, but I'm just going to draw a line from there to there. Now, don't worry that I've finished the line there, because what if I do over here, Revit? There we go. I've got my little intersection snap. There's a light blue line there, which indicates that it's aligned itself with that previous line, and I can destroy that straight through. So, there we go. Now, it's like I said, it's not 100% perfect, but if this is the only time that the builder is going to see these plans, and it's the only view that he needs, then this is perfectly adequate. We've been doing it in AutoCAD for years, so and in Revit, you um, that's not against the rules. Okay, we don't have to build everything in 3D and model at all. Okay, um, I, I teach my classes um, at Victoria University in, in Australia, in Melbourne. Okay, and I head up the classes by basically saying you pick your battles. Okay, so if you've got a battle where the client wants full, you know, wants a set of plans they've driven you down for cost, they're not interested in internal elevations, you pick this battle where you go right I'll do some basic 2D work because that is all the client needs, I'm still going to get paid, keep it nice and easy for yourself, don't break your back for them if you don't have to. Okay, so we've fitted out the bathroom there, if I go down the ground floor plan there, powder room, laundry half done, kitchen mostly done, now We'll call it quits for this particular video, and uh, we'll see you later. Okay, bye.